better get to that data core fast, Jimmy. The queen bitch over there is getting awful close. G'day ladies and gents, and welcome to, well, StarCraft 2 with Mags. So, why is Star... Yeah, 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 shh, be quiet. So, why is StarCraft 2 coming up on the channel? Well, honestly, it's all I've really been playing for the last couple of days. Legacy of the Void is out, and I've been getting my StarCraft back on. When this game first came out, or specifically Wings of Liberty came out, I think it was in 2010, and I hated the way that Blizzard actually deployed this game. I loved the game itself, but they've split each of the campaigns into three expansion packs, and it's taken five years to finally get the full game out. Now, I'm not particularly big on competitive multiplayer RTS. I love RTS in general, but I'm really not into the competitive side. So I didn't care about StarCraft's multiplayer at all, uh, outside of uh, some co-op with friends, and as for a little bit of fun in the minor leagues. I was never really major into it, and I don't think there's a problem with playing in that particular manner. I was always big on the campaign though. I love Blizzard storylines. They always do an incredible job of what they can do. So the way they actually deployed this game annoyed the shit out of me because it meant I had to wait five years to finally get the storyline to StarCraft 2 intact and for me to be able to play it through in a single session. This is probably one of the biggest... Hang on a second. Yeah, 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 Kerrigan. Shut the hell up. At least she doesn't know where to find the other cores. We better get to the next one fast. Alright, thank you. As I was saying, um, the storyline itself is huge. I, I say single session a moment ago. At this point, I'm probably six hours into just the replaying the Wings of Liberty. God damn it, Raynar. Alright, we'll try that again. I'm probably six hours into just replaying the Wings of Liberty campaign, and honestly... I, I haven't finished it yet. I'm probably two-thirds of the way through it from memory, but there's a phenomenal amount of content here. But still splitting this up over five years is... it, it was annoying. Sir, you better do something about that Nidus worm before our base gets overrun. Every single time. You never could recognize a lost cause, could you, Jim? Been waiting yeah, that was really informative, Kerrigan. Go the hell away. Anyways, that's what I've been up to. Playing through the Wings of Liberty campaign, or replaying through it. I played through it when it first came out five years ago. Um, I haven't touched it since. Then I'm going to play through Heart of the Swarm, which I have never played through before. And then I'm going to play through uh, Legacy of the Void. Honestly, because I'm not a hardcore competitive StarCraft player, I wasn't really thinking about putting any of this on the channel. This was just going to be my little private playthrough. There's some amazing StarCraft 2 players out there that have YouTube channels that are far more worthy of you watching than me just dicking around very poorly in the campaign modes and just enjoying myself. I tend to almost roleplay my StarCraft RTS rather than really competitive play, which is probably why it takes me so long to get through the campaign. So if I wasn't planning on putting any of this on the channel, why is it on the channel? Well, I had a little glitch with my computer over the last few days. So, this particular glitch is very much a YouTuber-only glitch. Everybody can have net connection issues, everybody can have computer issues. But sometimes, YouTubers are prone to a few other glitches, and some of them are really nasty. This is possibly one of the worst ones you can get. So, I've been playing and recording battles for the last couple of days for War Thunder and IL-2, and even some DCS. I did some flyouts with Grievous, he's come back to do some more flying with me, so he's he's back in War Thunder at the moment, at least flying as my wingman. He's not doing a huge amount of solo play. And we did, we actually had a really good battle, it was a great comparison for a review video between the, the new BF-109 E4 and the old E3. So we got that recorded, I did some jet gameplay, I got some recordings in the Thunder Jet out that I wanted to put up, I put a great P-47 video that I was going to put up. I recorded some MIG and some Sabre from DCS, and I did a little recording session where I went and took on some of the new mouse aimers in IL-2, flying joystick track IR from in cockpit only, which was entertaining, to say the least. I had a lot of fun doing that. 
So today, which is Friday night, I sat down to start recording these off, or start doing the post-commentary recordings on these to turn them into the videos that you watch on the channel, and promptly discovered that I actually had had an audio glitch the entire time that I had been recording. While I had been listening to the audio perfectly fine while I have been playing the games, with absolutely no problems whatsoever, all of my live recordings that I had been taken when I was flying out with Grievous and so on were blank. There was no audio recorded onto them at all. All the gameplay videos were also blank. And for some strange reason, whatever glitch caused the audio to shut down also recorded the videos to record off at about 15 frames per second. Probably 8 to 10 hours worth of recording time over three different games, and the results of all of those videos were entirely useless to me. Now that one gameplay session had some incredibly good matches in it. The uh, the result of all those matches was probably a week's worth of content. You know, seven videos over seven days. And that's before you take into account the other things that I was going to do on. So that was painful. I, I'm sitting down here tonight to make a video, and I've only actually discovered this about 20 minutes ago. Sat down to make a video for you guys, and I have literally nothing that I can turn into a video at the moment. So instead, I decided just to turn on the mic and play some StarCraft 2 and explain to you what the hell is going on and do an informal vlog. So anyway, that's why you're getting some StarCraft and that's what's been going on. So I've got to definitely fly out some more, uh, some, some more War Thunder and some more IL-2 at the moment because I've got to re-record everything that I just did and hope that I have some really good matches in the process. The bit that's really painful about this is the reason why I was trying to do a bulk fly out and build up a load of footage before going through, the, the real reason this is actually a little bit of an issue, is because what I was going to do is bulk fly these out, prepare a couple of videos in a row, so I had maybe three or four days worth of videos made ahead of time, and this would give me around four days to sit back and go through your submissions for the 30k subscriber contest, because the competition's over now, and at the moment I've got around about 600 entries that I've got to go through. So that's cool, I would have had time. But I've, since I'm unable to make the videos for it, uh, God, I'm going to have to be watching some footage for it. I'm somehow I've got to make videos to keep the videos coming up on a, a as close to daily as I possibly can, while still finding time to go through 600 entries to work out who my finalists are going to be for the 30k subscriber contest. I'm probably going to start with the t-shirt contest soon. It had the smallest number of entries overall. So, despite all of my planning to try and get all of this organised so I'd have the free time and make this as easy on myself as I possibly could be, uh, this has just turned into a pain in the ass. So, I'm, I'm hoping I'll still be able to maintain as close to a video a day as I possibly can while I'm working on this, but over the next week there may be a couple of days where I have to take a break in the middle because I'm just not going to have time to go through everybody's submission and fly out and make a video all on the same time. I mean, I am going to try, but we'll see what happens. So, since we've wound up with an informal vlog here, I suppose I should answer a couple of questions that have been popping up fairly regularly, especially since I did my most recent IL-2 video. The most common one is, Mag, should I buy this? Referring to IL-2 Battle of Stalingrad. Well... It's an interesting question, because a lot of people have suddenly gotten very interested in this game based entirely on the new tanks and the new mouse aim. Two things to keep in mind. Tanks is incredibly early implementation. In fact, what you're seeing wasn't actually designed or intended for addition into IL-2 at all. What actually happened there was in the developer's free time, this is when they were knocked off work and not working on the flight sim side, they built a module to put tanks into IL-2. And the module itself has been so popular that they are going to put it into the game properly. But it is still very early implementation. This public test was simply a test to see whether or not tanks worked at all, because the IL-2's engine is almost entirely designed for aircraft. And it is not a... It's not like War Thunder's engine which is still designed for air combat, but it was designed to be flexible in what it does. The engines that IL-2 use is... I can't actually remember the name of the engine off the top of my head, but it is an advanced version of the same engine that Rise of Flight uses. The engine was designed for high-fidelity 
simulation of piston aircraft. That's what it's designed to do. Anything else is outside of the realms of its initial design. It's impressive that it works at all, but it's going to be a long, long road before they actually have the tanks ready to, you know, what would you would call, you know, release quality. I think it's impressive that their first test is as good as it is, considering what the engine was actually designed to do. The second part is the mouse aim. It's still clearly marked as experimental. I would expect probably a couple of months before they've got the mouse aim working perfectly. So, while it is on sale now, and it is definitely worth buying now if you're interested in air simulation, World War II simulation, and you have a stick or are interested in getting a stick and practicing flying that way, it is definitely, on the special prices at the moment, it is definitely worth the money. And I could not recommend it anymore. However, if you're asking, is it worth buying right now for the mouse aim and for the tanks? No. The tanks, I'm probably guessing it's somewhere in the vicinity of six months before you have anything that'll be close to release standard. And even then, it'll probably still be in beta. The mouse aim, I would expect uh, at least a month to two months before they've got that operating what I would be considered again at release standard, non-experimental standard, and even then it will probably need a few kinks ironed out. So, yes, it's on special right now, it's incredibly cheap. If you've got a stick and you want to do some sim flying or semi-sim flying, so joystick control but with markers on, whichever way you prefer to fly, I don't judge people on what modes that they choose to use, yeah, it's worth picking up. But if you're looking at it first for these new features, these new features are exciting. These new features finally put some competition into this particular area of uh, semi-realistic sim combat that um, that I think was very sorely needed and will improve all the developers involved as a result of that competition. I think it's a great thing, but I don't think it's worth picking it up now based solely on those new features. Let those features get refined a little bit and then start sinking money into the game. If you want to get an early head start and you happen to have a joystick, however, completely different story. Go for it. The simulation and the joystick controlled marked normal mode in IL-2 are fantastic and definitely worth your time. That Queen of Blades really is quite a nuisance, isn't she? And I suddenly find myself not entirely sure how to continue this. Actually, I suppose it's time that I ask a question that I've been meaning to ask you guys for some time. I notice there's a lot of YouTubers out there that basically run a, a weekly vlog sort of thing. You know, Jingles has mingles with Jingles. Orange Doom has Doom Time that pops in about once a week. I've always sort of tried to avoid doing a weekly vlog because I wasn't entirely sure whether or not I'd have anything to say or if you guys would really have anything to ask. But with me finding myself having less and less time to go through the comments and always respond to some of the comments that I get in videos, I'm wondering whether or not I should... I hate when they jump in like that. Um, I'm starting to wonder whether or not I should actually designate one day a week that will be a vlog day, where I just make one of these. Pick some background footage, answer your questions, have a talk about what's been going on with the channel, maybe even use it as an opportunity to show how I do some of the things on the channel. So let me know in the comment section of this video if that's actually something you would like to see. Would you actually be interested in having me take up a weekly vlog? If I did that, I'd have to come up with a better name than vlog, of course, but would you be interested in actually seeing that? Until then, I think I'm going to go back to finishing off this particular battle in StarCraft 2 and play a little bit more of the campaign, and then I think I've got a little bit of flying to do because I've got some re-recordings to try and get out. Before I start going through your submissions, uh, t-shirt contest will be up first. I expect the t-shirt contest video should be up no later than Monday or Tuesday. So get ready to start the voting. Anyways, ladies and gents, hope you enjoyed the video. Click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.